Gentleness makes a good leader? Gentleness isn't weakness, Bob. It's strength under control. It's a strong hand with a soft touch. It's good for eggs and it's good for people. I'm so sorry for what I did. I was selfish and mean to you. I know. And I forgive you. What? Huh? The selfish son was back with his father again. And the relationship was healed. Because when it comes to relationships, nothing is more powerful than forgiveness. I'm selfish. I hurt you. I chose to desert you. But you were forgiving. And now I feel like living. We both hurt each other. We were mean to one another. But suddenly I'm feeling by forgiving we'll be healing. Forgiveness, the power of forgiveness to overcome the sickness that selfishness and pride always bring. Forgiveness, we all can have forgiveness and now we get to witness how God can help us heal broken things. It's God's way of living. To always be forgiving Our sisters and brothers With love for one another Forgiveness God gives us forgiveness So we can share forgiveness And watch how God can heal broken things Forgiveness Ruth kept caring for Naomi and Boaz kept caring for Ruth. They were showing love the way God designed it, by caring for each other, by putting others first. She shows love to dear Naomi. He shows love to dear Romy. Maybe God wants us together In a brand new family Boaz, I am wondering Well, your grain I'm plundering God has set our hearts to singing Could those soon be church bells ringing? Well, we don't have churches yet Because we're in the Old Testament And they haven't been invented But... I don't see why not. What our God is now revealing, love is much more than a feeling. This love we are now viewing, not a feeling, but a doing. Not just valentines and wooing, not a feeling, but a doing. This love we are pursuing, not, not a feeling, but... I was stopped by Jerry Boy, who accessorizes sportwear with plungers. Way to go, girl. Thanks, but I'm still going to be sweeping up the museum and the hat shop for weeks until they and the Larry Mobile are all fixed up. But telling the truth was worth it, right? Definitely. If I'd kept going with the lies, who knows how many more places I'd have to sweep up. Larry Boy, is there anything you'd like to add now that you've redeemed yourself? Just remember, the truth is hard to beat. And everyone watching can be that hero by always doing right and telling the truth. <laughs> Today's devotional is God First. Our verse is Matthew 6, verse 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Let's talk. What did we learn? What did the little fish want more than anything? What are some things that you value or treasure? How do we live out what we've just learned? What does the Bible say we should store up and treasure? 
Loving God and learning about Him are ways we treasure God first before anything else. What are ways we can put God first as a family? Let's pray together. Let's ask God to help us remember to focus on Him and treasure Him first, before anything else. Um, Marsha, what are you doing? I'm practicing impressions. You mean you can sound like other people? Cool. Who can you do? Well, you, Coco. Really? I'd love to hear it. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Coco, a blue mug with a delightful, hilarious, quick-witted marshmallow co-host. That's pretty good. Who else can you do? I can do the announcer. Listen. It's Coco Talk! Today's guest. Sammy the Slingshot to discuss the importance of accuracy. And our friend Fruitcake with a family recipe for shepherd's pie. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Hello everyone. We are super excited for today's show. Sammy the Slingshot is here. Do you know who she reminds me of? David Slingshot. Like the David Slingshot? Yep, David the Shepherd who became David the King. His Slingshot. Oh, that's so old school. Not to mention Old Testament. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if the next guest on the show was the rock who flew out of the Slingshot and hit Goliath? We tried to book him. He's on tour with his rock band. So he's a rock star? Get it? David was another kind of rock star. He was outsized by Goliath and faced him with nothing but a slingshot, a stone, and faith that God would win. And he did. Wow. So it didn't matter that Goliath was bigger because God was on David's side. Nothing really matters because you have God on your side. Here's a reenactment. I wonder if slingshots ever get dizzy spinning round and round and round and round and round. Great question. Why don't we ask? <laughs> Out of time so soon? Well, Sammy, we have to swing back to you. And fruitcake, Marcia and I were really wanting to have that shepherd's pie for dinner. Wait, what are we having for dinner now? No idea. But we'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Jesus, Messiah, Teacher, King. Jesus is the Messiah. This week's memory verse is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We're talking about a very famous prophet, a man named Isaiah. God used Isaiah to deliver messages from about 740 B.C. until around 680 B.C. In other words, from about 20 years before the Northern Kingdom was destroyed until about 40 years after. God had Isaiah warn Israel and Judah about the terrible things that were going to happen, about the end of Israel. But God also gave Isaiah another message, an amazing message. God told Isaiah what he was going to do next. He told him about the Messiah. The what? The Hebrew word Messiah means anointed one. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's right. Isaiah announces a Messiah who's for everyone, not just Israel. For unto us a child is born. Brother Louie, we sang that already. What else does he say? Isaiah says this Messiah will be punished for our sins. All the punishment we deserve will be put on this Messiah instead of on us. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. Isaiah is saying, look ahead, look forward. It's all about the Messiah. Let's say the memory verse together. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Let's talk. What did we learn? Who was the Messiah that Isaiah was talking about? How do we live out what we've just learned? Who can we tell about Jesus? How would you tell someone that Jesus is the Messiah? Let's pray together. What do we want to thank God for today? What do we want to ask God for today? We're not going to make it, Captain. The gravity is too great. Failure is not an option. We need more power. We've got no more power. I'm giving it everything. It's not enough. Looks like our final mission, Captain. It's been nice serving with you. No, there must be another way. <gasps> the bathroom's on the utility deck. You gotta go? No, divert the power from the bathrooms to the main engines. It just might be enough. It's crazy, but I've taken power from everywhere else. Oh, come on. That extra boost was just what we needed. Oh, Captain Buck, you're a genius. Congratulations, Captain what? Buck. Oh, uh, Pastor Paul. I don't know how you did it, but you're the first starship on record to escape a wormhole. We just needed to use the bathroom. I'm not sure what that means, but not only have you done something never done before, as of this mission, you, Buck Denver, have successfully brought the good news of Jesus to the entire galaxy. Well, I guess so. <laughs> you have saved the galaxy! Buck! 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 Oh, Buck. really? Buck. There was nothing. Buck! Buck. No, stop, stop, no. Back, oh, Back. come on, it was no big deal. Back, <laughs> Back. Wait, what? Back, where am I? You were daydreaming again and not answering your phone. You've reached Gospel Galaxy with Pastor Paul, a ministry of the Galactic Mission Board. Where are you calling from? Hmm? Out in space again? Yeah. Best save your dreaming for after work. We got phones to answer. You reach Gospel Galaxy with Pastor Paul, the Ministry of the Galactic Mission Board. Where are you calling from? You reach Gospel Galaxy with Pastor Paul, the Ministry of the Galactic Mission Board. How can I help you? You haven't received your tote bag? I can see why you're upset. I'd like to thank you for supporting our ministry, and I apologize for the delay in receiving your promotional item. Send through your name and address, and I'll get that tote bag right on its way. All right, bye now. I can't keep doing this. What? You don't like the Gospel Galaxy program anymore? Pastor Paul's great. He's making a big difference. It's me. I'm not doing any good at all. 
You just got a lady a tote bag. A tote bag she will enjoy for years to come. A tote bag to one lady. What's the problem? Buck doesn't think he's doing any good. But he got a lady a tote bag. Well, that's pretty good. It's not. It's nothing. Buck, what's going on? <sighs> Ever since I was a little kid, I dreamed about doing something big for God, like Billy Graham or Pastor Paul. Well, you know, some people are big things, people. And other people answer the phones and send out tote bags. But I don't want to be a tote bag guy. I want to be a big thing guy. <gasps> your phone is ringing. Are you standing on your desk? Maybe. That's your phone. You've reached Gospel Galaxy with Pastor Paul. A ministry of blah, blah, blah. How may I help you? The signal's out? When did it happen? Two days ago? And where are you? Sector 9, Quadrant 7. Thanks for calling. We'll put a team right on it. There's a whole quadrant that can't hear Pastor Paul. Must be a bad transponder. Put in a tech request. That could take weeks. We can't wait that long. I gotta go to the boss. Wait. Pastor Paul? This is big. Bigger than tote bags. To be continued. Will Buck do something big for God? Will the lady ever get her tote bag? And will Sector 9 get back online? Tune in next time for... Back in my day, we weren't allowed to go past Neptune. Episode 2, Captain Buck? That's next time on Galaxy Buck, Mission to Sector 9. Today's devotional is, don't give up. Our verse is, Galatians 6, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Oh, 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 oh,
home. Huh? Oh. Ah. Let's talk. What did we learn? What was the elephant trying to do? Was it easy or hard for the elephant to help the flower? How do we live out what we've just learned? When have you felt like giving up because something was hard for you? What does today's verse encourage us to do? Let's pray together. Let's ask God to help us never grow weary of doing good things for Him and for others. If you can't handle the heat, get out of the cocoa. Now that's much better. <laughs> it's Cocoa Talk. Today's guest, Ivan the Ice Water with a message about living well. And our friend Fruitcake with tips for beating the heat. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome. Ivan the Ice Water is our super cool guest today. Right, Marsha? Marsha? Ah. Uh, hey there, fellow uh, floaty. Not super talkative, is he? There's nothing as refreshing as ice water on a hot day. I love ice water, but it's nothing compared to sparkling water and definitely doesn't measure up to living water. You mean water that talks? No. Living water is what Jesus offered to the woman at the well. Did she drink it? Not exactly. You don't actually drink the kind of water Jesus offered her. He knew what the woman really needed was eternal life that comes when we have faith in him. Eternal? That's like forever. Exactly. Refreshing water forever sounds amazing. Before we dive in with Ivan, we have footage of some really big ice water in his homeland. Now that's a floaty. Let's find out more about how Ivan handles the heat. 
Oh man, we're out of time already? Thanks for chilling with us, Ivan. We should get you out of here before you melt. And fruitcake, we're sorry again. But you always keep it fresh. Talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. <laughs> 60 Second Bible Stories, Episode 1 Creation. Today's verse is Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let's wind the clock back, right to the beginning. There's no computers. No school. No parents. No cars. No animals and no trees. Nothing, just God, and he decides to get creative. Now, the earth was formless and dark. And on day one, God said, let there be light and pop, it appeared. He then called the light day and the darkness night. Day two, God creates the sky. On day three, it starts to get really exciting. God creates land and then covers it with loads of grass, plants, trees and bushes. Day four, he adds the sun, moon and all the twinkly stars. And on five, he fills the sea with fish and the air with birds. Day six, he makes all the animals. Cows, sheep, rhinos, creepy crawlies, lizards, tigers, giraffes, monkeys. Yes, I think they get the idea. He also made something very special, us humans. On day seven, he puts his feet up and has a little rest. <sighs> a good job done. Let's talk. What did we learn? What did God create on the first day? What did God do on the seventh day? Let's pray together. Let's thank God for his gift of creation. What else would you like to thank God for today? Adam and Eve. Today's verse is Genesis 3.23. So the Lord God sent them out of the Garden of Eden, where they would have to work the ground from which the man had been made. So after God created the world, he made the first human. His name was Adam, and he lived in a beautiful garden made for him by God. In the garden, there were lots of trees. And God told Adam that he could eat the fruit from any tree except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And if he did, he would die. Adam does as he's told and things go well. God gives him the job of naming all the animals. Uh, rhinoceros? and then decides to make him a special friend. God put Adam into a deep sleep, took out one of his ribs, and made a woman. Her name was Eve. Things went swimmingly until a nasty serpent showed up. He tricked Eve into eating the forbidden fruit. And she gave some of the fruit to Adam. They then became rather aware they were naked, so made clothes out of fig leaves. When God came to speak with them, they hid. Yes, that's right. They tried to play hide and seek with God. He soon found them, and Adam mm. told him what happened. God cursed the serpent for his trickery and kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden. Let's talk. What did we learn? What did God tell Adam and Eve not to do? How do you think they felt when they left the garden? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Noah. Today's verse is Genesis 9, 12 to 13. The rainbow that I have put in the sky will be my sign to you and to every living creature on earth. It will remind you that I will keep this promise forever. Imagine if God asked you to build a boat. And not a small boat, a really big, massive boat. It'd be pretty mind-blowing. I mean, where would you start? Well, that's what happened to Noah. 
Back then, the world had become a pretty messed up place. God even regretted making man. So he decided to destroy everything with a great flood. But Noah found favour with God. And he told Noah to make a huge ark. A kind of cruise ship, but not so luxurious. Anyway, he did it. Noah then took his family onto the ark just as God commanded. God also sent pairs of every kind of animal, creepy crawly and bird onto the ark. Then the flood came. The waters rose so high they covered the tallest mountain. Everything died. But Noah, his family and the animals were safe in the ark. After months of floating about, the waters stopped rising and the ark landed on a mountain top. When the waters are gone, God gave the command and they all left the ark. He then promised to never flood the world again and put a rainbow in the sky as a sign of that promise. Let's talk. What did we learn? What did God ask Noah to do? What do you think it would have been like to be on a boat with all those animals? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Moses. Today's verse is Exodus 3.12. God replied, I will be with you, and you will know that I am the one who sent you when you worship me on this mountain, after you have led my people out of Egypt. God's people, the Israelites, were slaves to the Egyptians. But God had a plan to rescue them. He commanded a man called Moses, via a burning bush, like you do, to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. After a bit of convincing, he set off along with his brother Aaron. They asked Pharaoh, but he said no. Not really a surprise. So God began a series of plagues to convince Pharaoh to change his mind. First, he turned the water in the river Nile into blood. Then sent a plague of frogs. Followed by a plague of gnats, then a plague of flies, a plague to the Egyptian livestock, and a plague of boils, then the biggest hailstorm ever, followed by locusts and then darkness. But Pharaoh still said no. A tough cookie to crack. So then God killed the firstborn son of each family, except for those that had put the blood of a lamb over their doorway. Finally... Pharaoh let them go. So Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. God even divided the Red Sea so they could escape. God had saved his people. Let's talk. What did we learn? What did God ask Moses to do? How did God lead his people out of Egypt? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? David and Goliath. Today's verse is 1 Samuel 17, 47. Everybody here will see that the Lord doesn't need swords or spears to save his people. The Lord always wins his battles, and he will help us defeat you. David was a young shepherd boy who looked after his father's sheep. His three oldest brothers were away fighting the Philistines with King Saul. One day, his dad asked him to take his brother some food. When he got there, he found the armies lined up ready for battle. He then saw a huge man coming out from the Philistine ranks. His name was Goliath, and he was their champion. He shouted out a challenge. He wanted a one-on-one -on -one winner-takes-all fight. But the Israelites just froze in fear and no one would fight him. Well, except for David. David told King Saul that he would fight Goliath. But Saul said no, he was too young. David was used to defending his sheep against lions and bears. So Goliath didn't scare him. Saul gave David his armour, but it was a tad on the big side. So instead he took his staff, sling and some stones and went to face Goliath. As Goliath started to approach him. David ran forward, put a stone in his sling and flung it at the giant. The stone hit him in the forehead and Goliath dropped down dead. God had given David a massive victory. Let's talk. What did we learn? Why was David at the battlefield? What happened when David fought Goliath? Let's 
Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Daniel and the Lion's Den. Today's verse is Daniel 6, 27. God rescues and saves people and does mighty miracles in heaven and on earth. He is the one who saved Daniel from the power of the lions. Daniel was a servant of King Darius. The king liked him and decided to make him the leader of his whole kingdom. The other leaders weren't really a fan of this idea, so hatched a plan to get rid of Daniel. They went to the king and asked that he make a new law. One where no one was to pray to any god or man except to the king. If they did, they would be thrown into the lion's den. Ow! The king agreed and the law was passed. The leaders knew that Daniel wouldn't stop praying to God. And they soon caught him in the act and told the king. He was upset but couldn't go back on his word. The plan had worked. Daniel was arrested and thrown to the lions. The next day, the king went straight back, removed the stone lid and called out to Daniel. And Daniel replied. God had sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. There wasn't a scratch on him. He was lifted out of the den. And Darius had all the men who had falsely accused Daniel thrown to the lions. Gobbled them up. He then made it law that people should fear and revere Daniel's God. Let's talk. What did we learn? Why did the king have to punish Daniel? What happened to Daniel when he was in the lion's den? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Today's verse is Jonah 2, 2. When I was in trouble, Lord, I prayed to you and you listened to me. I begged for your help and you answered my prayer. Nineveh had become a pretty wicked place. And not in a cool sense. One day, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and tell them to stop being naughty. Jonah refused and ran away. He got on a boat and sailed for Tarshish. So God decided to use a bit of gentle encouragement and sent a huge storm. Which almost broke up the boat! The sailors were petrified and started lobbing the cargo off the boat. Meanwhile, Jonah was having a snooze below deck. The captain woke him up. And they all drew lots to see who was responsible for the calamity. Jonah got the short straw. And tells them to throw him overboard. The sailors didn't want to kill him, so they tried to row back to shore. But God cranked up the storm, so in the end, they had to do it. In he went, and the storm stopped. God then sent a massive fish to swallow Jonah. While inside, Jonah prayed. God heard him and got the fish to spit him onto dry land. Jonah went to Nineveh, told the people to repent, and they obeyed God. Let's talk. What did we learn? What happened when God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh? Why did God make the big fish spit Jonah out? Let's pray together. What would you like to thank God for today? What would you like to ask God for today? Marsha, what are you doing? Spring cleaning. Where'd you even get this stuff? Oh, here and there. I've never seen you wear any of it. Well, for some reason, floating around in hot cocoa all day, I never get cold. It's Coco Talk! Today's guest, Stone, the Super Slam Rockwell, with a message about miracles. And our friend Fruitcake with exercise tips. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha! Happy Easter, everyone! Before we get to our hard-hitting interview, Stone the Super Slam Rockwell has challenged me to see if I can roll him over. Ooh, what do you get if you move him? I get to pick the music for the end of the show. But if I can't roll him over, 
Then he chooses one of your songs? Do you really have your own music? Oh yeah, rock and roll. Amazing. Okay, let's do this. Are you ready to roll, Fruitcake? Okay, in three, two, one. Well, that does look like a challenge. It is. I could use a miracle right about now. Oh, oh, you know what you remind me of, Mr. Stone, the Super Slam? C can I call you just Stone? You remind me of the big stone they put in front of Jesus' tomb when they buried him after he died on the cross. It was really hard to move, too. But when Jesus' friends went to see him, the stone was rolled away. <gasps> How did they move it? Asking for a friend. They didn't move it. And if you think that's amazing, get this. Jesus wasn't there. <laughs> Oh, that's right. The Bible says Jesus' friends found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they looked inside, they didn't find him there. Yep, Jesus had risen. That was the biggest miracle. He was alive again and is still alive today. That is amazing. You think you're amazed? After Jesus' friends left, they saw him walking along the road. They were so surprised. Jesus had risen. He had risen indeed. Are you okay? Maybe we should roll to a clip. Oh, right. Rolling! Whoa, you're really rolling. That's rock and roll if I ever saw it. Looks like we'll be hearing that Marcia song after all, Mr. Stone. Tell us, what's the secret for getting you to roll? Oh, man, we're out of time. Thanks for being here, Stone the Super Slam. And Fruitcake, appreciate you reffing. We really wanted to hear about your exercise routine. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to my song? Credit, gravel, towards a lot of stone. Gravel, pebbles, tough and soapstone. The fruit of the Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love. Here are some things that I love. Pencils. Sharp pencils. Red pens. Blue pens. The scientific explanation for love is quite complicated, but fascinating. When you mix together equal parts of adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin... No, 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 love! It's all about feeling. Flowers and chocolate. It's spaghetti for two by candlelight. It's dancing in the rain. It's sunshine and rainbows. Huh? Let's just see what the Bible has to say about love. Yeah. Love is patient and kind. It does not want what belongs to others. It does not brag. It is not proud or rude. It does not look out for its own interests, easily become angry, or keep track of other people's wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is full of joy when the truth is spoken. It always protects, trusts, hopes, and never gives up. Love never fails. And that's the kind of love that Jesus shows us every day. Let's talk. What did we learn? What do you think of when you hear the word love? What are some of the ways the Bible describes love? How can we live out what we've just learned? God gives us the fruit of the Spirit, including love. What are some ways that we can show that love to our family and friends this week? Let's pray together. Let's thank God that He loves us so much. 
let's ask him to fill our hearts with love for the people we meet this week. Time management, Venetian blinds, plaid, not that fancy argyle. The fruit of the Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control. It's the Self-Control Game! Where each contestant has to show self-control if they want to win big! Round one! Our first contestant is Armin. And he's been given a mystery package. He has to resist the temptation of opening the package no matter how curious he gets. This looks familiar. Wait a second. Is this a Captain Karate Dinocop action figure? Huh? This is just an oddly shaped potato. You are eliminated! Oh no! Round two! In this round, Lydia must listen to Hans singing karaoke for 30 seconds without pressing the button that will release a bucket of mashed potatoes right on his head. This should be a brace for Lydia, who always seems to have a level head. She might just be the one to win big today. People getting jealous of my robot. He's Uba. I'm Hans. Not. I can't take it anymore! That was quick! And round three! It's down to our final contestant, Micah. What do we have in store for him, Jane? Well, PB, he's got his work cut out for him because he has to stay awake while listening to Mr. Turtle talk about potatoes! Potatoes come in many shapes and sizes. Some big, some small, some are oddly shaped. He has to show self-control right now, or he will be eliminated. Must stay awake. This might be a good time to tell the audience about our sponsors. The Self-Control Game is brought to you by Obadiah's Oddly Shaped Potatoes and 1 Corinthians 10, 13. You are tempted in the same way all other human beings are. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted any more than you can take. But when you are tempted, God will give you a way out. Then you will be able to deal with it. In a shocking turn of events, Mr. Turtle put himself to sleep. Uh, huh? I guess that means Micah wins. Micah goes home with a copy of Hans Karaoke Hits and... A bag of Obadiah's oddly shaped potatoes. Hey, what are you kids doing in here? This is the janitor's closet. Let's talk. What did we learn? What does it mean to show self-control? Who won the self-control game in the video? How can we live out what we've just learned? Can you share a time when you had to show self-control? Was it hard or easy? Let's pray together. Let's thank God that He is always with us and ask Him to grow the spirit of self-control in us. Where's the music coming from? Is this some kind of game show? Are you guys rolling credits? Hey! Scram! The Monday Show! It's game time! Get up on your feet and play along! Let's play! Freeze Dance! 
When I say freeze, you stop dancing. When I say dance, you dance around. Ready? Dance! Freeze! Dance! Freeze! Dance! Freeze! Dance! Freeze! Dance, 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 dance! Yay! Stop and go! When I say stop, you stop moving. When I say go, you move around. Ready? Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go, 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 go! Yay! Where's Max? Can you find Max somewhere in this picture? When you do, call it out. Ready? Go! Nope, not there. Not there either. Not as easy as it looks. Hmm, there he is. You found him. <laughs> the fruit of the spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Faithfulness! In a world where fair-weather friends are everywhere... Hey! That's a cool hat! One of my friends? That was lame! We're not friends anymore! And gossipers betray the trust of others. I have a fear of toast. Please don't tell anyone. Your secret is safe with me. Psst. Gabe's afraid of toast. What a nerd. Betrayed! From the creator of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, comes a tale of three friends. Friendship, friendship, friendship. Who thought nothing could come between them. The Cat and Karate Dino Cop 3D movie is coming out. We have to go see it. We'll see it together. together. But when one of them forgot to do their homework... I forgot to do my homework. I can't go see the movie. But we had this plan for months. Ugh, we bought the tickets already. Their friendship was put to the test. Our friendship is being put to the test. Hey, I just said that. This wouldn't have happened if you didn't sleep through math class. I can't help it. Math is so boring. A decision would have to be made. A decision has to be made. Come on, guys. Get your own lines. Sorry. Sorry. We can't just leave him like this. You know how he is with math. 4 plus 12 equals... With time running out. 20 minutes until the movie. We don't have much time. Go on without me. I'm not going to make it. Would they abandon their friend? Or would they show? Let's do this. Faithfulness. 1 Peter 4.10 says, God's gifts of grace come in many forms. Each of you has received a gift in order to serve others. You should use it faithfully. What? Let's talk. What did we learn? What does it mean to be a faithful friend? How did Armin and Lydia show faithfulness to Micah? How can we live out what we've just learned? What is a way you can show faithfulness to your friends and family? How can we ask God to grow the fruit of faithfulness in us? Let's pray together. Let's thank God that He is always faithful to us and will never leave us.
the fruit of the Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Kindness. Welcome to Track and Field Day at Newly Elementary. Brought to you by Shrivel's Prune Juice. He's PB. She's Jane. And we're PB and Jane. We're all really excited for all the athletes who are running today. They look reluctant for physical activity, but it's gym class. They have no choice. PB, who do you think will be the fastest? I don't know, Jane, but I certainly don't want to be the slowest. Why is that, PB? You see, Jane, as the runners start the race, Chet, our very own school bully, will be released providing that extra bit of motivation they need to give it all they got. Sounds exciting and cruel. Ooh, it looks like Chet escaped. So they're off. Run for your lives! It's a good start for Micah. Looks like he's had some practice running from Chet. Interesting fact. Micah is Chet's favorite kid to beat up. And you can imagine what an excellent training program it is for him to run for his life every day. Oh, no! What do we have here? It looks like Gabe ah. has taken a tumble. Let's have another look at that in our slow motion instant replay. His shoes are untied! Next time, he'll have to try harder at crossing those bunny ears. Classic rookie mistake, PB. It looks like this is the end for Gabe, but wait! It appears he's getting a helping hand from his competitor, Micah! Another interesting fact about school bullies is they love the sound of lunch money. I can't tell if he's being brave or foolish. No, PB! He's being kind! Micah is using that to distract Chet away from Gabe. Well, that's it for track and field day at New Leaf Elementary. Looks like there's no losers in this race. We'll see you next year. I'm getting all misty-eyed. Philippians 2.4 says, None of you should look out just for your own good. Each of you should also look out for the good of others. Let's talk. What did we learn? How did Micah show kindness to Gabe? How can we live out what we've just learned? Share a time when someone showed kindness to you. How did you feel? What are some ways you can show kindness this week? Let's pray together. Let's thank God for His kindness toward us and ask God to help us be kind to everyone we meet. When I say dance, you dance around. Ready? Dance! Freeze! Dance! Freeze! Dance! Freeze! Dance! Freeze! Dance, 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 dance! Yay! Stop! And go. When I say stop, you stop moving. When I say go, you move around. Ready? Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go, 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 go! Yay! Where's Max? Can you find Max somewhere in this picture? When you do, call it out. Ready? Go! Nope, not there. Not there either. Not as easy as it looks. Hmm, there he is! You found him! Yay! <laughs> uh. 
The fruit of the Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Joy. Woohoo! Ice cream. This is gonna be good. Ah! Oh. Hey, Armin, what's the matter? My ice cream fell on the ground. Hmm. Sounds like you need some joy. Thankfully, I was looking on the internet and I found this. The Joy Hat 4000! I've got a bad feeling about this. Now I just need to press this and... Are you sure about this, Micah? And pull this. This feels funny! Oh. Ah! Armin, do you feel joy yet? Whoa, 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 whoa! What are you guys doing? Giving Armin joy with the Joy Hat 4000. This isn't working! Whoa. Well, you're looking in the wrong place. Try Psalm 1611. It says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. You see, Jesus wants us to find our joy in knowing Him. A lot of things can make you happy, like ice cream, or being right all the time, or getting straight A's, or an autographed CD of the dream, dude. Baby, baby, baby. Or even a Joy Hat 4000. But those things won't last. The joy that comes from Jesus lasts forever. I never thought of it like that. If my joy comes from Jesus, I can be happy even though I don't have any ice cream. That's right. And he wants us to show that joy to everyone. Let's talk. What did we learn? How did Armin and Micah try to find joy? Where does our true joy come from? How can we live out what we've just learned? How can we focus on the true joy that God gives us? How can we share that joy with other people? Let's pray together. Let's thank God for the true joy that comes from knowing and loving Jesus. Everybody needs some joy deep down in their heart. Everybody get down. Everybody get down. Everybody get down. Everybody get down. Previously on Galaxy Buck, Mission to Sector 9. Ever since I was a little kid, I dreamed about doing something big for God. You haven't received your tote bag? But I don't want to be a tote bag guy. I want to be a big thing guy. The signal's out. And where are you? Sector 9, Quadrant 7. I got to go to the boss. Pastor Paul? This is big. Bigger than tote bags. Get ready for Episode 2, Captain Buck. Uh, sir? Yes, what is it? It appears we have a transponder down in Sector 9, Quadrant 7, sir. Well, put in a tech request. Yes, but that could take weeks, and there's a whole quadrant of people who can't hear your program, who aren't learning about God. Who are you? Buck Denver, sir, from the call center. I appreciate your enthusiasm, Buck Denver from the call center. But our two repair crews are both out in the field. We have a third ship, but no crew available. It will have to wait. Well, you probably don't know this, sir, but I've been training to be a ship's captain in my spare time. I've taken all the classes online in conjunction with an app on my phone. You're learning to be a deep space captain with an app? 
It's amazing what you can do with apps these days. All I've left is the final exam, a real mission, under supervision, of course. So this could be my, uh, you know, final exam. Let me see if I'm getting this. You want to put together your own crew, take a ship you've never piloted into deep space, fix the transponder, and have it count as your final exam for your captain's license. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird, but... but... God wants us to do big things, sir. Nothing against tote bags, but, but this is what God wants me to do. Bring his word to all the people of Sector 9, Quadrant 7. I just need a chance. Hmm. Well, even if I were to say yes, I have no one to supervise you. All the crews are in the field. I think I have someone in mind, if it's not too crazy. Oh, Buck. That's absolutely insane. You have plenty of experience in space. But I haven't flown a mission in 17 years. It's like riding a bike. You never forget. I've never been in deep space. Back in my day, we weren't allowed to go past Neptune. It's all made of the same stuff. Uh, space stuff? God wants us to do big things, and I've been wasting my time with tote bags. Well, this is my chance. This is it. Oh, Buck, I'm not sure. For me? I don't know. For God? Oh. For the people of Sector 9, Quadrant 7? <laughs> We're going to space! What are you talking about? All of us. We're going to space to fix that transponder. You can fix a transponder, right? You guys are handy. We fixed a blender once. Same idea. But who's going to be captain? Me! Don't worry, I've been taking classes on my phone. Pastor Paul says it's okay. Sunday school lady's coming along to supervise. <gasps> and when we're finished, I'll be a captain for real. It's sort of like a field trip. Yeah, to an alien planet. What could possibly go wrong? To be continued. Will Buck and his crew fix the transponder? Will Sunday School Lady finally go past Neptune? Will Buck ever get his captain's license? Tune in next time for... I haven't run since 1998. Episode 3, Hyper Jump. That's next time on Galaxy Buck, Mission to Sector 9. of the Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Gentleness. Just add some stars, then a dash of color, and voila! Armin the astronaut exploring the vast reaches of space! Hey, Armin! Look what I made! That's a nice uh... It's a hippo! You call that a hippo? Looks more like a blue blob! You sure your pen didn't explode all over your paper? <laughs> See ya, losers! Oh! Hey Gabe, don't worry about Chet. I like your art. You do? Sure. I mean, the colors are the wrong shade, and the lines are shaky, and the proportions are way off, and... I get it! It looks bad! Hmm, what should I do? Titus 3 verse 2, tell them not to speak evil things against anyone. Remind them to live in peace. They must consider the needs of others. They must always be gentle toward everyone. Hey, I've got an idea. How about I give you some drawing tips and we can make your hippo even cooler. Yeah! And maybe we can put hippo in space! I like the sound of that. Wow, wow cool. this is great! A flying hippo in space? Did you draw this, Gabe? Yep. You're the best drawer in class. Looks like you have some competition. Don't worry.
sorry, Armin. Maybe someday you'll be as good as me. If you're practice. <laughs> oh, oh, very funny. Let's talk. What did we learn? How did Armin show gentleness toward Gabe? How can we live out what we've just learned? Do you think it's hard to be gentle toward other people? What is one way you can show gentleness? Let's pray together. Let's ask God to show us opportunities to be gentle toward other people and to grow a spirit of gentleness in us. Do do gentle Dennis, that's what they call me. Gentle Dennis, hoo ha, whoops! Hi, Dennis. Oh, is that box for me? Uh, yep. Uh, one box of, uh, Frank Giles. Sign here. Oh, goody. You can never have too many test tubes. I can't wait to you. Oh, my. You know, kids, sometimes life ain't so gentle. Like today, box of Frank Giles. Who knew? Remember, when life gives you Frank Giles, it's fragile. This has been a message from Gentle Dennis. The Monday Show. It's game time. Get up on your feet and play along. Let's play. Freeze dance. When I say freeze, you stop dancing. When I say dance, you dance around. Ready? Dance. Freeze. Dance! Breathe! Dance! Breathe! Dance! Breathe! Dance, 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 dance! Yay! Stop and go! When I say stop, you stop moving. When I say go, you move around. Ready? Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go, 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 go! Yay! Where's Max? Can you find Max somewhere in this picture? When you do, Call it out. Ready? Go! Nope, not there. Not there either. Not as easy as it looks. Hmm. There he is! You found him! Previously on Galaxy Buck, mission to Sector 9. It appears we have a transponder down in Sector 9, Quadrant 7, sir. I've never in deep space. Back in my day, we weren't allowed to go past Neptune. You probably don't know this, sir, but I've been training to be a ship's captain in my spare time. I've taken all the classes online in conjunction with an app on my phone. Buckle up for Episode 3, Hyper Jump. Ships nowadays are so automated, there's very little that could, could really go wrong. You see, guys? Just like I've been saying. Good heavens, they've gone metric. The buttons are different. It's all automated. You'll hardly have to push any. I hope I get to push some. What's the point of going to space if you can't push any buttons? Oh, dear. I'm patching in one of our engineers to talk through your mission. All right, you're on a transponder repair mission. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. See, I told you. The transponder in question is on the planet Talaris, Sector 9, Quadrant 7. Is that a nice planet? Most importantly, it's an uninhabited planet. No one lives there, so you shouldn't have any trouble. 
Well, that's a relief. You'll follow the beacon to the transponder unit. Tolaris is a volcanic planet. Most likely, seismic activity knocked the polyneutronic power rod out of alignment. You'll realign it, get the unit back up and running, and then head home. <laughs> oh, Talaris does have some nasty sandstorms, so watch out for those. But no inhabitants. Nope, not according to our sensors. Are your sensors ever wrong? Hardly ever. Uh, on the outside chance that they were wrong, uh, that we did bump into some inhabitants, um, what should we do? Oh, that's easy. It's easy, see? Run. Hmm? Huh? Uh, well, gotta get back to work. Enjoy! Did he say run? I haven't run since 1998. No one's going to have to run because this planet is uninhabited. That's what the sensors say. And they're hardly ever not very often wrong. Only occasionally. Oh, come on, guys. God wants us to do big things. This is a big thing. So this is what God wants us to do. And since God wants us to do this, he'll make sure nothing goes wrong. Are you sure that's how that works? It's on my poster. So fire up the engines and let's get moving. We've been moving this whole time. It's highly automated. In fact, we're just about ready to make our hyper jump to Sector 9. Quadrant 7. All right, hyper jump on my mark. Five, four, three. Too late. The ship's already made the decision. <laughs> to be continued. What will they find on Talaris? Will Ian ever get to push any buttons? Is Talaris really uninhabited? Tune in next time for... Maybe next time we should put on our seatbelts before we hyper jump. Episode 4, The Sandstorm. That's next time on Galaxy Buck, Mission to Sector 9. the Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Goodness. Dino jumping, dino standing, plus built-in dino talking action with Attitude, the Captain Karate Dino Cop action figure. I'm Captain Karate Dino Cop. Just go for it. Whoa, is that the Captain Karate Dino Cop action figure I see there? Yeah, my mom gave me this for my half birthday. She always gives me the toy I want because I'm such a good boy. Well, that's really cool. Could I see it? No, I don't like to share. It's mine. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to walk away from you now. Hans, you left your... Just go for it! Huh? Who said that? I'm Captain Karate Dino Cop with built-in talking action. You can do it! Do what? Are you saying I can take Hans's toy? That's stealing! Don't be a wimp! Just go for it! Do it! Hmm. Do it! Do what it, should I do? do? It, do it. Hey, Armin. What you got there? Hans dropped his Captain Karate Dino Cop action figure, and it's telling me to steal. You can do it! Just go for it! Uh, you do know you're listening to a toy, right? How about listening to what God says? James 4.17 So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. God says it's a sin to steal, so I shouldn't take this. I should give it back to Hans. Do the right thing! You said it, Captain Karate Dino Cop. I'm Captain Karate Dino Cop. Hans, I think this is yours. Oh, that old thing? Who needs it? Uba, destroy this plastic relic. Affirmative. Do the right thing! Oh, what a waste of a perfectly good action figure! I have the new toy! Sergeant Captain Karate Dino Cop! Goodness!
Craft and karate, dino cop. It's sold out in every shop. How could Hans let it drop? Goodness, should Armin go for the steal when the toy speaks for real? No, he knew a better way. Armin was good today. Let's talk. What did we learn? When Armin had the chance to do what was right or what was wrong, what did he choose? How can we live out what we've just learned? Can you think of a time you had to choose between doing the right thing or the wrong thing? How did God help you? Let's pray together. Let's thank God that He is always good to us and that His Word promises us that He will work all things together for our good. The fruit of the Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Peace. Peace! I love peace! No, peace. As in the fruit of the Spirit? That's a vegetable, Micah. Ah. Chill out. Have some peace, bro. Are you worried, anxious, scared of whatever's in your closet? How about the toes that's about to pop out? Now! Well, fret no more with peace. Peace? Peace! The truth and knowledge that God is in control over everything will help you overcome the fears of the world, which include toast! <laughs> Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to Him. Then God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. I get it now! Through Jesus, I can have peace, so I won't be afraid of toast. I'm as cool as a blue bumper. Uh, don't you mean cucumber? Nope. Let's talk. What did we learn? What is peace? What is God in control of? How can we live out what we've just learned? What are some things that make you feel afraid? We can always ask God to give us peace when we are afraid. Let's pray together. Let's thank God for the gift of peace and ask Him to help us remember that He is in control of everything. I am looking for peace. Peace? What I really want is peace. Please? Oh, won't you listen to my please? Please appease my request. Previously on Galaxy Buck, mission to Sector 9. You'll follow the beacon to the transponder unit. You'll realign it, get the unit back up and running, and then head home. God wants us to do big things. This is a big thing, so this is what God wants us to do. All right, hyper jump on my mark. Five, four, three. Too late. The ship's already made the decision. <laughs> Prepare yourself for episode four, The Sandstorm. Me?
maybe next time we should put on our seat belts before we hyper jump. Don't look at me. It was the ship. Uh, that must be Tolaris. It took us right there without pressing a button. But I wanted to press buttons. I wanted to press lots of buttons. Can we go back and do it again? No way. We're here. It's time to do something big to the shuttle. Whoa, this place is really red. It's iron oxide, just like Mars. Why didn't we just go to Mars? It's a lot closer. That's not where the transponder is, Ian. Oh, right. Where is the transponder? We're tracking its beacon. The shuttle will set us down a couple hundred yards away. It sure doesn't look like anyone lives here. The sensors were right. It is uninhabited. All right, everyone, we're setting down. Hmm, according to the beacon, the transponder is this way. No, wait. That way! Are we really following him? It would appear so. Doing something big for God. I hope he knows what he's getting us into. No one lives here, right? The planet is completely uninhabited. Yes, but does anybody live here? Do you know what the word uninhabited means? Not exactly. It means no one lives here. Oh, good. So no one lives here? Hey, is that the transponder? No, the transponder unit is still about 50 yards away. Over there, see? We made it! If that's the transponder unit, what's that? It is a door, and on the door it says TU, transponder unit, and it's covered with scratches, and the hinges have been pried right off. Wait, the hinges were pried off? That means... Run! Run! Wait, where are you going? Rip that door right off its hinges! This planet is not uninhabited, Buck. That means it's time to run! <laughs> Wait! It was probably just seismic activity! Buck, earthquakes don't rip doors off and throw them 50 yards. There are creatures on this planet, which means we need to get off of it. <laughs> Ow! Well, you don't have to throw sand at me. I didn't throw sand yet. Ow! It's a sandstorm, just like Pete said. What? Oh, man. Come on! Back to the shadow! But we're so close! The transponder is right there! God wants us to do big things. Remember my poster? It's too risky, Buck. They'll send another crew to fix the transponder. And I'll go back to handing out tote bags? Not gonna happen. God wants me to do big things, and I'm gonna do big things. Buck, come back. It's too dangerous, Buck. I can't believe he's doing this. We'll never find him in this storm. Let's wait it out in the shuttle and find Buck when it's all over. We'll be back for you, Buck. There it is. I'm going to realign the poly whatever power rod and get the transponder back online. Pastor Paul will be impressed. God will be impressed. I'll be doing big things for him.
Okay, this is easy. Just need emergency power so I can see what I'm doing. Here we go. Ooh, good. Now, where's the power supply? Oh, here it is. See? No problem. Just realign the power rod. Wait, where is it? The seismic activity must have knocked it right out. It's a glowing tube. Should be easy to spot. Hmm? Better idea. Security cameras record everything. They'll show me where the power source fell. Just play the last thing that was recorded? Aha! An earthquake! The seismic activity! That wasn't seismic activity. That definitely wasn't seismic activity. This planet is not uninhabited! Hmm? What's that? Hmm? Who's there? Is that you, Sunday School Lady? I don't get it. The shuttle should be right in front of us. If we didn't take any wrong turns in this storm, which is very possible... We should have borrowed Buck's location tracker before we let him run off. Next time. We'll definitely do that next time. Yes, next time. Wait, I see something. That must be the shuttle. It's getting closer, but I'm not moving. That is not the shuttle! <laughs> to be continued. What happened to Buck? Will the crew get back to the shuttle? Who or what lives on Talaris? Tune in next time for... Huh? What? Where? Hey, what? Huh? Episode 5, The Hermit. That's next time on Galaxy Buck, Mission to Sector 9. So much love and joy and all the wonder, all because a little baby was born. Wait, you do know the story of the very first Christmas, don't you? I'm not talking about all the jingle bells and decorations, but the real story of Christmas. Oh, I need to introduce myself. I'm the hopeful world. You didn't think you'd get a chance to talk to the whole world today, did you? Oh, right! The very first Christmas! when we celebrate that baby Jesus is born. But this story really begins years and years and years and years before the very first Christmas with two men named Abraham and Isaiah. Did you ever hear about God's three promises to Abraham? Yes, I have. Well, maybe, kinda, well, 
No. <laughs> well, a long, long time ago, God promised Abraham three things. Number one, his family would become a great nation. <laughs> Number two, they would have their very own land, the promised land. <laughs> and number three, through that nation would come a blessing for the whole world. Whoa! Yay! Whoa! Pretty great promises, huh? Really great promises. But then something happened. Uh oh! What? Jerusalem was destroyed, and the Israelites were stuck in Babylon. Far away from the promised land. So, it seemed like none, none of those promises, promises are coming true. true. Israel was supposed to be a great nation, but now they weren't a nation at all. How could a blessing for the whole world come from Israel now? We don't know. God's promises confused the Israelites living in Babylon. They wondered if these promises would still come true, and if they could still trust God. Is our story over? Is this the end? Well, God knew how confused they were, so He sent the prophet Isaiah to give them one of the most important messages in the whole Bible. In the whole Bible, what was the message? It's not the end, Isaiah said. In fact, just wait till you hear what God is going to do next. Well, the Israelites were super excited! Yay! Why? Because Isaiah told them about the Messiah. Wait, what's that? The Messiah? Messiah means anointed one. Samuel had anointed young David with oil, which means that he was being set apart by God for a very special job, to be king of all Israel. And now Isaiah was saying that there was another anointed one coming. A baby will be born. He will be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God with us. But. He would also have another name. The baby would be from King David's family, and he would grow up to rule God's people forever. Wow! Forever is like a really long time. It turns out the hope of the world wasn't a mighty nation or a big army. The hope of the world was going to be. A baby? <laughs> you got it. Now, can you guess the baby's name? Oh, I know, I know, Jesus. <laughs> wow, a baby? And what about that Isaiah? He was telling people about a baby who would save the world in the future. Boy, oh, baby boy. If only they had been around to see it, they would never have believed how the baby would arrive. But before we get there, we have to go back to God's three important promises. Do you remember God's three promises to Abraham? Actually, I do. His family would become a great nation. They would have their very own land, the promised land. And through that nation, a blessing would come for the whole world. Right. Well, after 1,500 years, two of those promises had come true. Amazing! And what about the third promise? You mean the promise of the blessing for the whole world? The one that promised the Messiah? The Anointed One? That's the one. Had that one come true too? Uh... No. Oh. Many years had passed since the time Isaiah had spoken about that promise, and the Israelites, well, you can imagine what they were saying. Where's the blessing? Where's the Messiah? Is he ever going to show up? 
Oh, we're starting to lose hope. But then, something amazing happened. Really? What? In a village called Nazareth, there was a young woman named Mary. One day, God sent an angel to give her a special message. A special message? What was it? The angel said, You will have a son. A son? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm not even married. Mary wasn't married yet, but she had promised to marry a man named Joseph. Then the angel said something truly amazing. The baby will be a blessing for the whole world. He will be the Son of God. That's the promise they were waiting for. Yes, Mary would give birth to the Son of God, the blessing for the whole world. That's so amazing. And if you were shocked to hear about this, you can imagine what Mary must have felt like. Why, you would think she would have passed out and fallen on the floor right then. Uh. But Mary was brave. She trusted God. And she said, I am the servant of the Lord. May this happen just as you have said. Wow! Mary really trusted God. Yes, she did. Then the angel said, The baby's name will be Jesus. Was this the Messiah the people had been waiting for? <laughs> you got it! I knew it! So then what happened? Well, when it was time for the baby to be born, Joseph and Mary traveled to a place called Bethlehem. Was that a long ways away? It was. And they got there by... A donkey! That must have been hard. I think so. And on top of that, when they got to Bethlehem, they suddenly needed a place for Mary to have the baby. Oh, did they look for a hospital? <laughs> they didn't have hospitals back then. What about a palace? I mean, the Son of God should be born in the best place, right? Well... They... Or the best hotel? All the inns were full. So, what did they do? Since all the inns were full, Mary had her baby in... <laughs> a barn? A barn! The blessing that Israel had been awaiting for almost 2,000 years was born in a... <laughs> a barn! Oh, my! Mary didn't have her baby in a fancy palace or a nice warm inn. Nope. Jesus was born in a stinky, smelly barn next to cows and sheep and goats and chickens. The promised blessing for the whole world had finally come, but he didn't arrive quite the way people expected. How about that? Being born in a barn? So many animals and a cute little baby Jesus right there in the middle of them. Away in the manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his feet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Mm -hmm. stars in the sky look down where he lay? Oh, look at all those stars! God kept his promise to Israel. The Messiah had come. And although he was born in a humble barn and not in a fancy palace or the best inn, God's kingdom celebrated in a most amazing way. Really? How? 
like this. Angels! A whole bunch of them showed up, and they sang and celebrated the birth of the new king. King Jesus! And where do you think God's mighty angels announced the birth of his son? Oh, I know. That's easy. They probably announced it in the biggest cities to the richest, fanciest, most important people of the whole wide world. Like kings and queens. No. Powerful generals? Ah, guess again. Oh, really rich people? <laughs> nope. Maybe this will help. <laughs> Shepherds. Look! Shepherds? Remember that God chose a humble barn for the birth of his son? Yeah, that is so weird. Right? I guess God doesn't do things the way we think he should. I guess not. So, the angels appeared in the middle of a field outside the city. That's right! They sang to shepherds. They did! Dirty, smelly guys. Hey! With dirty, smelly sheep. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. God wanted to show how his love is for everyone, even the most gentle and lowly. Yay! <laughs> Go. You will recognize the Messiah by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in a blanket and lying in a manger. Go and see him. God showed the world his power, who he really was. Not with an army, but with a baby. Not in a palace, but in a barn. Not to kings and rich people, but to us, shepherds. God's rescue plan was happening. His kingdom was on the move. He was showing that his way of working was not going to be the way that people expected. It was going to be different. Yes, that little tiny newborn baby. Born in a barn. Celebrated by shepherds. Was going to turn the whole world. Whoa! Upside down. Upside down is right. Imagine that, watching sheep at night when, bam, angels appear. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare in room. In heaven and nature sing, in heaven and nature sing, in heaven. The angels announced his arrival to the shepherds, but the stinky and smelly shepherds weren't the only ones who learned about the gift from God. Do you know who this is? Oh, that's baby Jesus. I can tell because I know he was born in a barn. <laughs> yep, born in a barn instead of a palace. No one expected that. Do you know what else happened? Um, oh, a whole bunch of angels and shepherds showed up to celebrate. <laughs> and that's not even the whole story. There's more? Oh, yes. Sometime later, some wise men from the east followed a bright star in the sky to Jerusalem. They were really excited. Where can we find the newborn king? We saw his star in the sky. We want to worship him. And, and bring, bring him, him gifts, gifts, too. When the people heard about a new baby king, they got really excited, too. And soon the news reached King Herod. There was already a king? King Herod. And he was ruler over all the land. Well, when he heard all the talk about a new king, he got a little worried. So he called his counselors together. Counselors! I need...
need to know where the child king is supposed to be born. <laughs> In Bethlehem. Aha! So Herod had the wise men brought to him right away and said, As soon as you find the child, let me know because I want to worship him too. Hmm. Okay. So the wise men continued on their way, following the star. That must have been so awesome! Their very own compass in the sky! That's right! Soon the star stopped over the place where Jesus was. Ooh! We saw his star in the sky. We bring gifts fit for a king. Gold! Frankincense! Myrrh! And they bowed down and worshipped him. Wow! And then they went back to tell King Herod that they have found Jesus. Nope. What? Why not? God warned the wise men not to go back to King Herod. You see, Herod didn't really want to worship Jesus. He didn't? Not at all. Herod was jealous of the new baby king. So, after the wise men left Jesus and his family, an angel spoke to Jesus' dad, Joseph, in a dream and said, Take the baby and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, because Herod is looking for the child. Phew! So, Jesus was safe? Yes, he was. Yay! Jesus would grow up with his earthly parents in a faraway land until it was time to begin the work his heavenly father had sent him to do. It would be many years before the world would fully experience Jesus' teachings, his miracles, his love. But let's save those stories for another time. This is the story of the very first Christmas, when God's Son Jesus was born in a barn to be our Savior and our friend. Have a joyful, hopeful Christmas, everybody! Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let us receive our King. Let every heart be fair and room. In heaven and nature sing, in heaven and nature sing, in heaven. Marsha, what are you doing? I'm practicing impressions. You mean you can sound like other people? Cool. Who can you do? Well, you, Coco. Really? I'd love to hear it. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Coco, a blue mug with a delightful, hilarious, quick-witted marshmallow co-host. That's pretty good. Who else can you do? I can do the announcer. Listen. It's Coco Talk, today's guest. Sammy the Slingshot to discuss the importance of accuracy. And our friend Fruitcake with a family recipe for shepherd's pie. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Hello everyone. We are super excited for today's show. Sammy the Slingshot is here. Do you know who she reminds me of? David Slingshot. Like the David Slingshot? Yep, David the Shepherd who became David the King. His Slingshot. Oh, that's so old school. Not to mention Old Testament. 
Wouldn't it be funny if the next guest on the show was the rock who flew out of the slingshot and hit Goliath? We tried to book him. He's on tour with his rock band. So he's a rock star? Get it? David was another kind of rock star. He was outsized by Goliath and faced him with nothing but a slingshot, a stone, and faith that God would win. And he did. Wow. So it didn't matter that Goliath was bigger because God was on David's side. Nothing really matters because you have God on your side. Here's a reenactment. I wonder if slingshots ever get dizzy spinning round and round and round and round and round. Great question. Why don't we ask? Out of time so soon? Well, Sammy, we have to swing back to ya. And fruitcake, Marcia and I were really wanting to have that shepherd's pie for dinner. Wait, what are we having for dinner now? No idea. But we'll talk to you all next time on Coco Talk. Previously on Galaxy Buck, mission to Sector 9. The transponder unit is still about 50 yards away. Over there, see? We made it. Security cameras record everything. They'll show me where the power source fell. Aha, uh -huh. an earthquake, the seismic activity. That wasn't seismic activity. This planet is not uninhabited. Get ready to meet the Hermit, Episode 5. <laughs> what? What? Where? Hey, what? Huh? Um, hello? Clive? Ian? Sunday school lady? Um. Is someone there? Uh, Marcy? Is that you? Uh, definitely not Marcy. Ooh. Oh, dear Lord, help me. I was just trying to do something big for you. I didn't want to be eaten by an alien creature. Well, call me a smurgeon fern. You're from Earth, aren't you? I am. I am. Don't eat me. I'm nothing but head. <laughs> <laughs> Heavens to Tarblin! I'm not gonna eat ya, Earthman. No matter how many times I patch that hole, things just keep falling through. And now an Earthman. Well, let's turn on some light and have a look at ya. Yes, you are all head, aren't you? What do they call you, big headed earth man? I'm Buck. Buck Denver. Buck Buck Denver. Just one buck. Oh, I prefer Buck Buck. Why so far from home? All alone. I'm not alone. I've got a crew. Uh, well, I did. I'm on a mission to fix the transponder so Sector 9 Quadrant 7 can hear Gospel Galaxy with Pastor Paul. Oh, Gospel Galaxy, my favorite show. Wait, you listen to the show? Sure do. I got a tote bag around here somewhere. Until last week when the signal just fizzled away. I know, and I'm here to fix it, and then finally I'll be doing something big for God and I'll become a captain and my life will really matter. At least that's what was supposed to happen. Until everything went wrong. The door was ripped clean off, and there was a sandstorm, and my crew ran off, and it wasn't seismic activity, it was scary aliens, because this planet isn't uninhabited like it was supposed to be, and I'm just trying to do something big like God wants. <sighs> I'm doing my part. Why isn't he doing his? Hey, why'd you... What's that? It's my tote bag. Pick it up. Come with me. Didn't you hear what I said? I'm trying to do what God wants, but it's all falling apart. You're a follower of Jesus, right? 
You mean a Christian? I am. But how do you know about Jesus? Missionaries came to my home planet, Jowin. They told me about Jesus. That's why I'm here. You're in a cave because of Jesus? Exactly. Brace yourself. What? <laughs> What'd you do that for? Pick up your bag. Why are we beating up plants? Why am I holding this bag? When I started walking with Jesus, he led me here. First, just to be with him. Focus on him. Get to know him. Uh, hold the bag right there. And now he's given me a garden to tend. You mean these plants we're beating up? Not exactly. <clears throat> It's a different sort of garden. Oh, for heaven's sake, hang on to the bag. And this is the big thing God has given you to do? Beating up plants in a cave? Tell me, Buck Buck Denver, how do you know God wants you to do big things? Everyone knows that. Everyone? Well, it's on my poster. Your poster? Yeah, see? God wants you to do big things. It's right there. That's why he made us, to do stuff for him, to save the world. Can I make one small change to your poster? I guess, but be careful, because it's very special. Hey, my poster! Why do you... That's better. What? God wants you... I need the other half. No, you don't. But this doesn't say anything. <laughs> That says exactly what you need to hear, Buck Buck. God wants you. Wants me to what? He doesn't want you to do anything. He just wants you. Wants me? He wants to be with you. He loves you, Buck Buck, not because of what you can do, just because he made you. As a matter of fact, he loves you even when you aren't doing anything at all. Follow me. We've got a garden to tend. Wait. Is this your garden? Not exactly. Tell me, Buck Buck, this dream, this big thing you were trying to do for God, was it bringing you joy, making you happy? Was it bringing your friends joy? Well, not exactly. But who says I'm supposed to be happy? I'm saving the world. I'll be happy when I've done something big. And the fruit of the Spirit is peace. Joy, love, that's the Apostle Paul talking, Buck Buck, in the New Testament. If we're filled with the Spirit, walking with Jesus, we'll be filled with peace, filled with love, filled with joy, not later, not after we've done something big. But I don't... Your problem is you don't know what you are. I'm a big-headed earth man. Yeah, yeah. I mean your true nature. We need to take a little ride. What? In there? After you. To be continued. Will Buck figure out what God wants him to do? Can Buck tape his poster back together? What is this mysterious garden? Tune in next time for... They're beautiful. Episode 6, The Gloon. That's next time on Galaxy Buck, Mission to Sector 9. Praise Party, Episode 3, Jesus is My Best Friend. Today's verse is John 15, 12 through 13. My command is this, 
Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Let's talk. What did we learn? What are some things that make a good friend? Which days of the week is Jesus there for you? How do we live out what we've just learned? How do you feel knowing that Jesus is always there for you? What are some ways that you can be a good friend? Let's pray together. Let's thank Jesus for being our best friend and ask for him to help us learn to be good friends to others. Previously on Galaxy Buck, Mission to Sector 9. Why so far from home? All alone. I'm not alone. I've got a crew. Well, I did. How do you know God wants you to do big things? Well, it's on my poster. God wants you to do big things. It's right there. That's why he made us, to do stuff for him. Hey, my poster! God wants you. We need to take a little ride. What? In there? After you. Get ready for Episode 6, The Gloom. Wait, are we underwater? I was like you once, Buck Buck. I thought God needed me to save the world. I thought I could save the world, that I had the power, if only I worked hard enough. So I worked hard, so hard it almost killed me, so hard it made me miserable. I thought I was a Baruba. Oh, uh, what? It's a Jowan fish, big, strong, fast. You don't mess with a Baruba. Like a shark back on Earth. Right, a shark. God shark! That's what I thought I was. If you aren't a shark, what are you? A whale? A barracuda? A swordfish? A gloon. A gloon? Push that button. Release the seeds into the water. Are we feeding something? Push it! I don't see anything. Give it a second. Oh, is that? 
that a gloon? We Earthlings call those jellyfish. Jellyfish. I like that name, too. Gloon, or jellyfish, can't choose their own course. They can't go anywhere or accomplish anything on their own. Well, what's the point of that? A gloon is carried by the current. It must trust the current to take it where it needs to be. Push that button again. Hold it down. And so are we. And so are you. But only when we're trusting the current. And the current is? God's will. God's love. God's plan for us. When we let go of our goals, our desires, our dreams, and just focus on God, walking with Jesus, the current of his heart carries us along. My life is no longer mine to worry about. God has my life suspended in the current of his love. Like a groon. Like a jellyfish. I'm not a shark. You are not a shark. And pretending you are only hurts yourself and the people around you. God isn't asking you to do big things. He's asking you to be with him. Trust him. Rest in him. The people around me. My crew. I gotta go find my crew. I was so worried about my dream that I left them in a sandstorm. Do you have a radio? I do. Let's get you closer to the surface and we'll ring them up. I'm sure they're all right. I'm ringing up the shuttle. They should be there, but they're not. Where else could they be? Um, Tolaris isn't exactly uninhabited, you know. Oh, no. I think I know where you'll find them. I'll give you directions. Wait, can't you come with me? It's time to try walking with Jesus for yourself, Buck Buck Denver. But I haven't learned enough. I just found out I'm a glue, not a baruba, like three minutes ago. You'll keep learning your whole life long, and I'll help. Here, take this. What is this? A deep space communicator. This one and its linked pair can open up a channel no matter how far apart they are. But only for a couple minutes a day. I've got the linked pair. You take this one. All right. I guess I'm ready to go. But how am I going to know what to do when I'm following Jesus? Is he going to tell me everything? As you learn to hear his voice, he'll tell you some things, but not everything. When in doubt, use the rule of love. Is that where I hug everybody? No, unless they need a hug. The rule of love is simply to put others first. If God puts someone in your path that you can help, help them. It's that simple? It's that simple. If God puts someone in my path that I can help, help them. The rule of love. All right, I'll give it a try. But now you better get going. Your friends are probably in a pretty tight spot. We're in a pretty tight spot. I'll say we are. We're in a cage, hanging in the air over hot lava, surrounded by angry aliens. To be continued. Can Buck find his crew and the power rod? Will Buck be a gloon or a baruba? Will Buck follow the rule of love? Tune in next time for... My, what luck! Why should I duck? Where's my truck? Episode 7, Buck's Big Choice. That's next time on Galaxy Buck, Mission to Sector 9.
Marsha, what are you doing? Spring cleaning. Where'd you even get this stuff? Oh, here and there. I've never seen you wear any of it. Well, for some reason, floating around in hot cocoa all day, I never get cold. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Stone, the Super Slam Rockwell, with a message about miracles and our friend Fruitcake with exercise tips. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Happy Easter, everyone. Before we get to our hard-hitting interview, Stone the Super Slam Rockwell has challenged me to see if I can roll him over. Ooh, what do you get if you move him? I get to pick the music for the end of the show. But if I can't roll him over, then he chooses one of your songs? Do you really have your own music? Oh yeah, rock and roll. Amazing. Okay, let's do this. Are you ready to roll, Fruitcake? Okay, in three, two, one. like a challenge. It is. I can use a miracle right about now. Oh, oh, you know what you remind me of, Mr. Stone, the Super Slam? C can I call you just Stone? You remind me of the big stone they put in front of Jesus' tomb when they buried him after he died on the cross. It was really hard to move, too. But when Jesus' friends went to see him, the stone was rolled away. <laughs> How did they move it? Asking for a friend. They didn't move it. And if you think that's amazing, get this. Jesus wasn't there. <laughs> oh, that's right. The Bible says Jesus' friends found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they looked inside, they didn't find him there. Yep, Jesus had risen. That was the biggest miracle. He was alive again and is still alive today. That is amazing. You think you're amazed? After Jesus' friends left, they saw him walking along the road. They were so surprised. Jesus had risen. He had risen indeed. Are you okay? Maybe we should roll to a clip. Oh, right. Rolling. Whoa, you're really rolling. That's rock and roll if I ever saw it. Looks like we'll be hearing that Marsha song after all, Mr. Stone. Tell us, what's the secret for getting you to roll? Oh, man, we're out of time. Thanks for being here, Stone the Super Slam. And Fruitcake, appreciate you reffing. We really wanted to hear about your exercise routine. See you all next time on Coco Talk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to my song? Planet, Marvel, towards the Rhino Stone. Gravel, Pebbles, Tuff, and Soap Stone. Previously on Galaxy Buck, mission to Sector 9. Push that button. Release the seeds into the water. They're beautiful. And so are we. God isn't asking you to do big things. He's asking you to be with him. Trust him. But how am I going to know what to do when I'm following Jesus? When in doubt, use the rule of love. We're in a cage. Hanging in the air. Over all over. Surrounded by angry aliens. Find out what Buck decides in Episode 7, Buck's Big Choice. I think this qualifies as a tight spot. How did we get here exactly? Oh yes, I remember. Buck Denver. Let's have an adventure. Do big things for God. It's my dream. And now he's run off, and we're gonna be deep fried by E.T. Oh, to be answering phones again. Sending out tote bags. Verifying credit card numbers. What's that alien have? 
It's glowing. It's the power rod from the transponder. That's what Buck is out there looking for. It looks like the aliens are worshipping it. I wonder if we'll ever see Buck again. I'm pretty sure we will. How do you know? Because he's right there. <gasps> Hi, Buck! Don't blow his cover! Oh, um... My, what luck! Why should I duck? Where's my truck? Stop it. They don't even speak English. I don't need this. God doesn't want me to do big things. He just wants me to walk with him. And I found my friends. I can rescue them. But maybe God wants me to have both. Now that I've given up my dream, maybe he wants to give it back. That'd be just like God. I can walk with him and have my dream. <sighs> hey. <laughs> what is going on down there? Oh, fuck. What are you doing? <laughs> Let it go, Buck. Give me my dream back. So is the captivity. Continued. Will Buck rescue his crew? Will the crew get deep fried by the aliens? Will Buck finally get to do big things for God? Tune in next time for. How about my friends? Hello! Episode 8 Mission Failure? That's next time on Galaxy Buck, Mission to Sector 9. Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Patience! Ah, the library. My favorite place. Nothing like being surrounded by books filled with information and knowledge with no one to bother you. <coughs> huh? Do you mind? <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want some? Um, no thank you. Huh. More for me, then. <sighs> Just keep calm, Lydia. He's going to run out of chips sooner or later. Ah, it has come to thee, lone potato chip. As your salty comrades have fallen, one question remains. Will you be as delicious and as crunchy? Only one way to find out. Well, at least it's over now. Can't you take that literally like anywhere else? Hey, Lydia, would you keep it down? This is a library, you know. <laughs> Ephesians 4.2 says, Be patient with each other, 
making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Well, there you have it, kids. Lydia did not show patience. As a result, she disrupted the library, and now, detention. Also, Mike has got detention for eating chips in a library. You shouldn't do that. Let's talk. What did we learn? What is patience? Why do you think it was hard for Lydia to show patience? How can we live out what we've just learned? Like flowers grow in a garden, God can grow the fruit of the Spirit in us. Talk about a time when God gave you the patience you needed. Let's pray together. Let's ask God to always give us the patience we need. And let's thank Him for always being patient with us. When you practice patience, good things happen. For instance, steeped tea, dry paint, grass grows, Previously on Galaxy Buck, mission to Sector 9. We're in a cage, hanging in the air, over all over, surrounded by angry aliens. <laughs> Give me my dream back! Let it go, Buck. Find out now in Episode 8, Mission Failure? No! I can get it! No, Black! I can get it! It's my dream! God wants me to do big things! No, Buck. God wants you. The current is God's love, God's heart. Trust the current. How will I know what to do? The rule of love. If God puts someone in your path who needs help, help them. It's good to be off that planet and headed home. It was great how you saved that alien. Right, and us too. I'm sorry we couldn't complete the mission, Buck. I know being a captain was your dream. You know, I'm a gloon, not a baruba. Oh, uh, what? I'm a jellyfish, not a shark. A new friend taught me that drifting in the current of God's will, letting him choose my course, is better than any dream I could ever come up with. That's the wisest thing I've ever heard you say, Buck. Wait, when did you have time to make a new friend? I'll explain later. Let's head home. There's phones to answer and tote bags to send. Let me push the button. Too late. The ship did it. I don't like this ship at all. You've 
reach Gospel Galaxy with Pastor Paul, a ministry of the Galactic Mission Board. Where are you calling from? You've reached Gospel Galaxy with Pastor oh, no, Paul, a ministry of the Galactic Mission Board. Where are you calling from? Down the hall? Uh, who's calling? Pastor Paul? Do, do you need a tote bag? Oh, I'll be right there. It's me, Buck Denver. Uh, yes. I hear the mission was not a success. Uh, no. Tolaris is not uninhabited. I was not able to fix the transponder. I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. I don't need to be a captain unless God wants me to. I know that now. I have peace. And even a little joy for the first time. I knew Talaris wasn't completely uninhabited, for a very old friend lives there. You may have met him. Wait, what? I was the first missionary to a small planet called Jowen. I brought the stories of Jesus. You were that missionary? I still talk to him quite frequently. I can't believe this. Well, believe it or not, we just spoke this morning, and he believes you learned exactly what you needed to learn, Captain Buck Denver. I'm sorry, what did you say? We need leaders who follow God's heart, not their own. Who trust God's plans, not their own. We'll put together the crew you need and get you on your way. I've already got the crew I need. How do we look, people? All stocked and ready, Captain. Our new engineer disabled the autopilot so Ian can push the buttons. I am so ready to push a button. New engineer? First engineer Pete, at your service. Welcome aboard, engineer Pete. First mate Sunday school lady? Captain, our mission is logged and we're ready to fly. I'm proud of you, Buck. Jelly on. Jelly on! Wait! I didn't push the button! Oh! You wanted me to disable the autopilot now? Oh man! Can we go back and do it again? Here! Push this button! <laughs> can I do it again? Once is enough! What did I say? <laughs> that was fun. Do not touch it again. Ow! Seatbelts first! Love that video? Hit subscribe.